This presentation is on lease buy analysis. My name is Pat Obi, Professor of Finance at Purdue University Calumet. Lease financing, of course, is a financing decision between two parties, the lessor and the lessee. The lessee is the individual who's borrowing the equipment from the lessor. And in the analysis that we're about to present here, it's going to be from the lessee standpoint, the individual who wishes to borrow this equipment. And for that reason, this is considered a financing decision. And on this page is a summary of the different types of leases, which you can go over at your own time, and more about capital lease, which is also referred to as financing lease. And then, importantly, we show here five reasons why lease financing is compared to debt financing. Remember, in debt financing, you borrow money for which you pay interest. In lease financing, you borrow the underlying equipment for which you, you make lease payments. And therefore, because the two are comparable, as we summarize right here, the um, opportunity cost of a lease becomes the after-tax cost of debt. And the reason it's after-tax is because both lease payments on a lease and interest payments on debt are tax deductible. So now, here's the mini case that helps you understand how to perform the financial analysis, the Leibold uh, Industries uh, case, and then it continues on. Be sure to read it completely, and then um, the spreadsheet analysis is presented um, for the balance of uh, this uh, presentation time. So let's go there right away. So in this mini case, we're told of um, a company wishing to considering an equipment worth a hundred thousand dollars the equipment if purchased would be depreciated over four years and um, they're going to use um, straight line depreciation and over four years it's going to be twenty five thousand dollars per year in depreciation expenses now though we're told actually that although the equipment would be depreciated over four years it would actually be used for three years at the end of which we expect the equipment to be sold for $30,000. The weighted average cost of capital that would apply to the lessor's analysis is 11%, and the corporate tax rate to use in this analysis is 20%. All right, now. So now, from the lessor's standpoint, here's the question. Should the lessor go ahead and buy this equipment using borrowed funds, or should it go ahead and lease it? If it chooses to purchase it by borrowing money, then it will have to take out a full loan of $100,000 so as to buy it. Interest rate on the loan is 10%. On an after-tax basis, it's 8%. Now, the loan term for this case is equal to the term of use of the equipment, which is three years. And again, if you buy the equipment, you can expect to sell it three years from now for thirty thousand dollars at that time though we will find from our depreciation schedule that the book value is actually twenty five thousand dollars now if the equipment is purchased there's going to be three thousand dollars in annual maintenance expenses that um, the owner of the equipment would incur now alternatively you may wish to lease the equipment for three years and make annual lease payments equal to 33500 bucks. Now, if you lease it, you don't plan to exercise a buyout option, meaning at the end of three years, you'll simply return the equipment to the lessor without any intention to buy it out uh, from that lessor because you don't really need to use the equipment. And the case makes the point very clear. If I may go back out there, swing him right back here, it says, that well right here there you go it says never nevertheless the equipment will be used for only three years and then sold because Leibold plans to move to a new facility at that time so because of that there's not going to be any buyout option so we begin now the residual value that you see here is the same as the expected market value of the equipment three years from now. So the analysis begins with the depreciation schedule. As you can see here, depreciation is straight line, $25,000 per year for four years. 
And now though, remember, three years from now though, this equipment would be sold. If it is sold at that time, we're expecting it to be sold to fetch $30,000. But look over here. The book value based on our depreciation is $25,000. So the difference of $5,000 is going to be taxed. Uh, it's going to be taxable because you're selling it for $5,000 more than it is worth in the books. In the loan amortization schedule, it's going to be amortized for three years and amortization, um, the um, function is a payment function. So equal PMT actually, equal PMT, open parenthesis, it prompts you for the rate and now for the rate you scroll up here alright that's the rate of 10 percent you hit comma and you can look at it right here so the next um, item there is number of periods so click on three the cell containing three comma it prompts you for present value of the loan before you click on it type negative that way your result would be positive so you click on the value of the loan these two are optional and they do not apply the future value and the type type here would be whether payments are made before or at the end of the period. By default, payments are made at the end of the period. So close parenthesis right away and hit enter. And when you do so, you, it takes you down there. You can see that's how we got these cash flows right there. Now, and of course, the interest payments portion of these payments are shown here. And the um, loan repayment, the principal repayment, is also shown here. So the sum of these two columns equal these um, annual payments. So now let's look at the uh, buy option. If we borrow to buy this equipment, then we're going to pay maintenance expenses each year for three years. These are the interest payments that are associated with uh, the loan payoff obtained from the amortization schedule. If I go here, you'll see the values right here. And finally, depreciation expenses. These $25,000 depreciation cash flows are referencing these um, values right here for the first three years. And then determine the tax effects. Of course, it's all going to be tax savings associated with these expenses. And then add back depreciation to obtain the uh, net cash flows. Depreciation is equal to net income plus depreciation of ten thousand dollars you add ten thousand to this you get this to this amount you add this um, and I'm sorry you know uh, you add uh, twenty five thousand dollars to this net income to get this and to this net income you'd add the second twenty five thousand dollars and finally add twenty five thousand dollars to this net income to get this and so these are the net cash flows to work with now afterward identify the loan repayments while principal repayments are not tax dedu deductible they are however cash outflows because you're going to have to pay off the loan over the years so this is a contra entry right here you really need not show the amount you borrowed and the amount you spent to purchase the assets because the two is a wash nevertheless I leave it there you know just um, for the heck of it, <laughs> all right? So now, since you're going to use this equipment for three years and then get rid of it, then an additional cash inflow in the third year would be the sale of the equipment, which is $30,000. And here's going to be the tax effect, all right? So I did some interesting stuff here, but don't worry about this as much. Just understand that your tax effect would be equal to, if I come out here, all right, it'll be equal to, the uh, tax rate multiplied by the uh, well let's tax rate multiplied by the market value of the equipment uh, minus the book value so market value is thirty thousand dollars book value is right here this twenty five thousand dollars right here and so market value which is over here thirty grand minus book value of twenty five that's five thousand times the tax rate off you go up here 20 percent and that's how you would get I scroll down here that's how you get this one thousand dollars right here so then sum all these you get this sum these two you get this and sum all of these to get this 
find the NPV, making sure to use the after tax custom debt. So all we did there was equal NPV, open parenthesis. It prompts you for the rate. So you scroll up, scroll up right here, click on the after tax custom debt, scroll back down, hit comma. It prompts you for the cash flows, well the values from the first. So this is the first to the end and close parenthesis. Now there is no initial cash flow, so ignore that. Enter. And that's how you get this that you see here. If, on the other hand, you choose to lease this equipment, you're going to have to make annual lease payments of 33500 There are no other cash flows associated with leasing the equipment. Tax effects are shown here, which is simply the tax rate of 20% multiplied by the um, lease payments. And then, th since uh, you don't plan to buy all the equipment at the end of the lease term, it means no additional cash flow would appear there. Now, keep in mind, if in fact the C plans to uh, keep using the equipment after the lease term of three years, then there would be an additional negative cash flow equal to the projected salvage value of $30,000. Now, if that's the case, then if you scroll right back here to the buy option, it means this is buy option. It means that sale of the asset would be zero right here. Nothing would be shown here. Because if you say to me that if I lease, if you lease, lease an asset for three years at the end of it, you plan to buy it out so as to keep using it, well, that, that tells me that if you were to go ahead and buy the equipment rather than lease it, then you plan to keep using it beyond three years. And therefore, there will be no cash flow, um, additional cash flow implications right here. In this analysis, however, you do plan you do not plan to keep using the equipment after three years. Therefore, if you buy the equipment, you're going to have to sell it after three years and recognize the tax effects. If, on the other hand, you choose to lease it, and given that you don't plan to keep using the equipment after three years, there is not going to be any cash flow um, issues associated with um, the buyout option in the third and final year here. Therefore, these are the final cash flows, which, when discounted, at the after-tax cost of debt would give you 69000 and 66.2. So as you can see here, if I scroll up just a tad, you see that if you borrow and buy the equipment, that's, let's get rid of that, this is the net present value of the cost of doing that. If, on the other hand, you choose to lease the equipment, this is the net present value of the cost of doing that. As you can see, leasing the equipment is cheaper than borrowing to buy the equipment by this difference amount of 12, 12 12.21, called the net advantage to leasing. Question. What would be the lease payment at which you would, you'd be indifferent between Lease between borrowing to buy the equipment and leasing the equipment. In other words, what would be the lease payment at which the net advantage to leasing is equal to zero because the two costs are identical? Well, for that, we use the Go Seek command. And here on Excel 2010, you'd have to go to Data and then What If? choose goal seek for set cell you want to set the cell containing net advantage to leasing to click here to a value of type in zero click here by changing what do you want to change scroll up here by changing this guy right here the lease payment and click OK and click OK once once again so this here is the break break even lease payment. If lease payment is thirty four thousand and eighty eight, I tell you what, the net present value of the cost of leasing is identical to the net present value of the cost of buying, giving us a net advantage leasing of zero. And so that's shown right here, right, as the break even lease payment. So let's go ahead and undo so we can carry on with uh, the analysis. So now, how about the lessor? For the lessor, it's actually a financing decision, sorry, an investment decision. The lessor is like a bank 
or some leasing company who is in uh, who is in the business to make money. So the lessor is the guy who lends out the equipment to the lessee and in return receives, as you see here, lease payments every period. In this example, thirty-three thousand five hundred. Being the owner of the equipment, if the equipment is leased out, there's the lessor would have to take care of the uh, maintenance expenses, which will cost three thousand dollars per year. As well, because the lessor owns the equipment, uh, he or she gets to write off the depreciation expenses of twenty-five thousand dollars per year. Now you sum all of these, all right? Sum all of these. You get these cash flows here. You recognize the tax effects, which is the tax rate, as you see up here, multiplied by the um, by these uh, operating um, cash flows right there, operating income, so to speak. Now, keep in mind that this spreadsheet is not posted for a reason, because your what I want you to do is to try to learn the analysis by watching this video and then construct your own spreadsheet. All right, so the net cash flow here would be net income plus depreciation. So you add back the depreciation amounts for each of the years to get this. Now the lessor is the guy who owns the equipment, which he or she would have purchased initially for $100,000. Now at the end of three years, if the equipment is returned, the lessor can then, if he or she chooses, sell it in the open market for thirty grand and make sure to pay the tax associated with it. Now, sometimes students would ask, but what if the lessee plans to keep using the equipment beyond three years? Well, that that solves the problem for the lessor. That means the lessor will receive this 30 grand from the lessee. If the lessee returns it, then the lessor can turn around and sell it in the open market for the projected price of 30 grand. So either way, there should be a cash inflow um, established at this point unless the equipment at that time is worthless. Now that's the tax effect. Sum all of these, all right? So basically bring all of these down and for the third and final year add up all of these to get 58,400 and compute the net present value of this lease investment making sure this time that since it is from the lessor standpoint that you use the weighted average cost of capital as the discount rate. So to get this NPV right here all I did was equal use the NPV function open parenthesis when it prompts you for the rate you go up here in your input and click on the WAC the weighted average cost of capital comma then let me scroll down to show what's going on here it prompts you for the values cash flow starting from the first one this is the first one click hold move to the end close parenthesis and then subtract the cost now be careful again to subtract the cost which is shown here in negative fashion since it's a cash outflow use positive and click on it because positive negative would subtract this amount so hit enter and that's how you get this NPV of lease of uh, 6950.24 negative and of course because this is negative you will reject this lease investment so the lessor is not going to do any any deal we calculate the IRR using the IRR function to find it to be 7.4 percent which of course is less than the weighted average cost of capital of 11 percent question what would be the lease payment at which the net present value of this lease investment for the lessor is zero because that will give us the break-even lease payment. So for that you'd have to again go to data, go to what if analysis, choose goal seek and this time click on the cell containing the NPV and set that cell to a value of zero. And click here by changing while your cursor is blinking there go right up here and click on the lease payment and OK and OK. As you can see what this says is that if the lease payment is 37055 then um, the NPV, if I scroll down, of the cost, oh, sorry, the NPV of this lease investment would be zero. In other words, for any lease payment below 37055 uh, the lessor shouldn't want to do this deal at all and 
for at this rate you have just earned a rate of return equal to the cost of capital so the lessor uh, should want a lease payment above thirty seven thousand and fifty five to get into this deal funny for this lease payment of thirty seven thousand and fifty five which is the threshold um, lease payment for the lessor if I scroll up you find that um, the net advantage to leasing for the lessee is negative <laughs> meaning that the lessee for that um, break-even lease payment for that for the lessor would not even want to get into this deal as you can see the NPV cost of lease for the lessee is um, way larger than the cost of um, borrowing to buy the equipment so for that am for that amount the lessor wouldn't want to make this deal and the lessee is better off uh, purchasing the equipment with uh, borrowed money all right so that actually wraps up this presentation uh, one final thing here uh, sometimes students would say well if I'm sh if you show this sale of equipment here as well as go up here in the um, lessee's analysis and show it here are you not uh, double counting or kind of repeating the same thing well actually remember that under the buy option for the lessee the guy who's borrowing the equipment the lessee is not going to be is a, a firm or an individual who's no more going to be doing business with the lessor so this is saying that the lessee the uh, borrowing firm would choose to uh, go it on his or her own by simply taking out a loan buying the equipment and assume ownership of the equipment now if on the other hand the lessee chooses to borrow um, sorry borrow the equipment that that's correct then it means that now we have the lessor in the um, um, in in the picture and that means that at the end of the lease term the lessor will get to either receive payment for the outright sale of the equipment to the lessee or get the equipment back and then sell it in the open market all right so this concludes this presentation hope um, um, it's proved to be helpful